Look at this. Mm -mm -mm. For those of you that have been dying to uh, feel a penguin foot, and I know some of them, <laughs> this one's been around. Not only can you feel it, but the skin comes off in your hand. Delightful. Ah, there oh, we go. Peel God. that right back. With rather impressive mm. claws here. Now, but they do feel the claws. I mean, they're well. This guy's really degenerating quickly but here. The wings? I don't know. The wings it smells are pretty bad. <laughs> Whoo wee! Now, do you just touch it and then smell your fingers? It's delightful. Okay. Yeah, this uh, we'll find a better carcass. That one's a pretty. A penguin old. foot. <laughs> Let's stand back a little bit because some people want to get uh, photographs just so we get some photographs. These are these water boats. You can see they'd take the whale boats and they'd cover up the decks, and then they'd put water, take it out to the boats themselves. Remember, this is an old whaling station. That is a reference here. These boats are still here. They're covered, and the boats are here um, in uh, deteriorating, of course, but here they are. How long have these uh, boats been here? What's the era here? Well, the Hector Whaling Company opened up in the 1314 season and was closed down in 32. So everything that's here that has to do with the whaling station uh, was left here at that time. However, since then, the British Antarctic Survey has been in here. They had a major survey effort out of this area in the 50s, late mid to late 50s, early 60s, during the International Geophysical Year. And uh, the Argentines and the Chileans and the British have off and on claimed various parts of this, uh, this island. Okay. Larry was just saying, and I certainly have to agree, there's an eeriness, uh, the, the fog, and well, if you can see just uh, just uh, little buildings and shacks and various structures and just off in the mist. So this is a male, pretty good sized one. What is the little one? What is the little one? We're looking at a Weddell or a Weddell seal. Oh! It's a fur seal. I did recognize him. <laughs> That's he's great. This Washa is a spotted a fur seal. Sub-adult male fur seal there. Off yeah, to the right. Are, these are the guys, the, the ones that we want to keep clear of. Which one, the big one or the small one? The small one. They're okay, the off to the right. Much nastier than one fur seal. You can bite through all your layers of clothing. Oh, well, oh. you better watch out, Marsha. You took your coat off, your parker. <laughs> Marsha Green that took our coat off for parker. It's, it's a beautiful day. This, the big one, the Waddell seal, just looking at us, and we don't want to get close enough to the first seal to see if they're looking or not. Smaller but nasty, the first seal. Larry says this first seal, very unusual that it's here now. It's probably a non-breeding male at about a 1,000 pounds. And Marsha just said that uh, first seals are born snarling, so we're a keeping on distance here. Right now, we're walking over fresh ice. Uh, it's a little slippery. The uh, first slippery ice, we have to be careful. It's watery. Marsh is slipping and sliding along, so we have to be pretty careful here. Brand new. It's almost like this whole trip has been programmed. Uh, when it was time for us to see whales, we saw whales. When it was time for us to see the penguins, we saw them. The ice came along right on time. Uh, now a first seal shows up. It shouldn't be here now, but it is. And we heard that we probably wouldn't see any. Folks, this is a perfect, perfect trip. Everything we came to see, uh, we're getting to see. And I hope I'm passing this on uh, so that uh, we all appreciate it. You can almost hear the ice as we walk. I don't want to trip and lose our equipment here. And, and it's very deep right along there. We're looking at Megan and people are uh, it's, we're beyond the fresh ice, are coming beyond the fresh ice now, and it's very deep right ahead of us. And what we thought were penguins out there are just posts, as far as we can tell. I said, that's a nice grouping over there, but they're posts, not penguins. Megan was just saying, don't be surprised if it's not six inches uh, uh, above the knee, so be very careful. People are just, their legs are just disappearing in the snow, in the ice. I hope you can. I'm going to let the mic run a little bit so you can hear the, the maybe you can get the, the depth of the snow here. Listen. Whoa. 
getting that, folks? Well, folks, I'd love to say that we got up that uh, mountain with all that snow, but we did it. There are a couple coming back as well now. There are a few of us down here that didn't go up. Very treacherous, very tough walking up there. And the equipment, it's not waterproof and neither am I. But uh, I was more cautious about the equipment, perhaps, I guess, more cautious about my own safety. So I didn't go up there, so I don't know what's beyond there, but we'll get the, we'll get the update from... Uh, from um hey we'll get the update from larry hobbs uh, we're looking at the first seal and the and the waddell seal just to explain again what a seal uh, the seal is a uh, take a uh the seals uh just a description a quick one about the seals generally it's sort of like an overstuffed sausage uh this seal right here i would put it uh probably around the eight feet tall if it was standing and then, of course, the flipper is in brown, and uh, for the most part, brown. And then the flipper is the, 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 the sort of where the legs would be, kind of like if uh, the end of a shrimp, the tail end of the shrimp, the little fan. It's sort of an overstuffed sausage with the flippers and sort of like the fan for legs. And one right now, the Waddell uh, seal is stretching. Here are some of the sounds of the Antarctic. I hope you can hear them. I've, uh, I'm by myself. We're all by ourselves here. Uh, all the folks have gone up over the mountain. A couple of us stragglers uh, came back along the beach. Uh, I'm sitting on one of these boats, one of the water boats, and uh, what I was hoping to find over here is quiet, and we're going to hear that quiet in a moment. But I'm thinking about uh, my friends back home, back in New York. I'm thinking about my listeners, you folks. I'm thinking about family. And it's a very quiet, and I'm feeling really good right now. Uh, it's it's wonderful here. I'm thinking about my daughter Kimberly, um, and hoping she is doing well. And of course, mom in Florida, and uh, and that's what's happening right now. I'm going to let you listen to the quiet a little bit, and then. Uh, I'll go back to my meditation and uh, listen to the quiet for a moment and see what this uh, brings to you. We have arrived at the top of the hill. Uh, it was snowy. It was icy coming up. Uh, you, you, your feet uh, slipped into the water uh, through the ice uh, right up to the knee. I felt it right up to the knee. And uh, the secret is try to be in the back and follow footsteps up because if the folks in front of you didn't sink in, then you won't sink in. And then the event was about a quarter mile walk from the beach. Uh, the rest of us are just kind of straggling up. A few are going back. But uh, honestly speaking, uh, I didn't make the walk on the first or the second landing today, and I believe I reported that, as any good reporter would do. Uh, but then on the other hand, uh, I made this one. It's uh, not quite as difficult as the, as the one before this. We are at the, uh, the top, the mouth of the Deception Volcano. This is where the Deception Craters are, and we're looking straight down into the mouth of it now. And the, the one we're looking at right ahead of us and down below about, oh, gee, I won't even venture to guess how many feet, uh, is the eruption of 1969. Then another bowl, a bowl, uh, was the 1970 eruption. So we're looking right down into the mouth of the crater. So uh, that's where we are right now. And off in the distance, and the fog is lifting a little bit, uh, we can see the Explorer. Um, just to make note right now that uh, we do dress in layers, and we are in the Antarctica. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is, I read nothing in the brochures about sweating. Because we sweat getting up here. It's been hot uh, inside. We're wearing the parkas, and they breathe with us. But it's been hot, and was a tough road to hoe getting up here. Some of the other folks are getting up here now. And... Uh, what I'll be doing as soon as Larry gets up. Now, Larry 
came up, and then he went down to get some more people, and he'll be up, and we're going to do a recap on the uh, on the landing just prior to this, as well as looking at what we're going to be doing here. So uh, I'm going to cut tape, and we will be back with you uh, with Larry Hobbs. Hold on. We are with uh, Larry Hobbs at the top of uh, this mountain, and as I said, we're at, uh, looking down the mouth of a crater, a volcano, and, and now dormant, but you never know. I guess 1970 was the last time it erupted, and uh, Larry Hobbs promised if I made this walk and got up here, he would do a recap and uh, and give us a look at what we're looking at now. Larry Hobbs, I'm here, you're here, here we go. Also talk about how to walk lightly in the snow. <laughs> well, we just had a lesson in walking lightly. The trouble was it was a little bit over knee-deep in water with uh, lots of ice in it. So uh, right now my boots are completely filled with water, and I didn't walk lightly. I just, But in, in some snow you actually can. If you think of stepping up instead of stepping down, then uh, you actually can stay up on top of it, and we were able to do that down in Whalers Bay. Uh, where we, after we came in shore there at the whaling station that the Hector Whaling Company built in 1913-1914, uh, we uh, took a little bit of look at the at that. And the uh, and I also noticed it was black beach, a black a black sand, and then the mist coming up. What is geothermal? I guess that plugs in here. Yeah, this uh, volcano has been around for some time. Some people say the real base rocks as long as four million years, but as we know it, probably a few thousand years. And it's been very active. In 1925, there in Whalers Bay, the water actually boiled and. Uh, clean the paint off the bottom of all the whaling boats that were in the in the bay there. So it erupts periodically. So we had steam coming up from the fumaroles, the uh, melt of the ice, the glaciers, the snow, actually seeps down into the caldera itself, goes down into the crater and gets warmed by the warmer rocks and rises again. And that's what we're getting here. So uh, just got a report from Matt that over at the uh, swimming hole, it's it's looking pretty good. That's where the warm water comes from. There's some swimming. Okay, now, uh, and the black sand, the Black Beach, or what is that? Well, we're all just, uh, we're on an active volcano, and this is all ash, things that have been spewn out of the volcano uh, as recently as 1970. Uh, the eruptions here have been pretty, uh, pretty big ones. Uh, we'll read tonight and recap the, uh, the actual transcription of the radio messages sent out by the Brits in uh, 1970 when the last one went off down over in Pendulum Cove. Uh, so it's, it's the, the ash that's been ejected from these different different eruptions here. Okay, now I didn't make the, uh, the walk to the top of the mountain and it was very strenuous and I'm not the... I, I'm, I'm a little bit younger than most of the folks that are here. You know, I'm somewhere in the middle there, but uh, almost everybody made it to the top but me and a couple other stragglers. What what was uh, waiting us at the top if I had made it? Well, it's really not much different than it is right here at the edge of the caldera. If you go up to the top, you're just looking across it instead of across the breadth here. But it's uh, this, this caldera is spectacular. I've been taking pictures of this for the last 10 years and watching the changes over time. It's eroding away. Um, there are... It was a lake there for many years, then no lake, and it looks like this year there's going to be a lake again. There's a new dam formed down there at the other end. Uh, really, you're just looking right down the face into the caldera itself. It's hard to describe what we're looking at, but it is just, I mean, it's a painting right here. It's just really, really magnificent. 